I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest video. And the video today is one I really enjoy filming. It is a week of my handmade wardrobe. So I'm going to pop on every day this week and share with you what I'm wearing for my handmade wardrobe. And I'll talk about the sewing patterns that I'm wearing and the fabrics that I've chosen and any adjustments or hacks I've made to the pattern. And I'll also share a picture so you can see what it looks like and what I've styled it with and that sort of thing. And I really enjoy doing these videos because it's fun to share what I'm wearing and also it does make me reach for different things in my wardrobe that I haven't worn for a while. So yeah, it really makes me feel like I'm using different things for my handmade wardrobe. So today is Sunday, I'm kicking off on a Sunday and you might notice if you've watched my videos before, I'm somewhere different for this filming. I'm actually upstairs today in our back bedroom because downstairs my son and daughter are having quite a lively game with my husband and I thought if I tried to film downstairs in the next room you'd probably be able to hear quite a lot of that game as well so I thought I'd pop up here to film today's um, little episode and then I'll be downstairs hopefully for the rest of the week. But yeah today I am wearing um, this, this handmade top and a pair of ready to wear jeans and um, we've had quite a busy day actually it's now I think around half past three I haven't got a clock in here but I think it's about half past three. And this morning I went out to play tennis with my son. He's getting really into tennis at the moment. So we booked a court, the local tennis courts and just had a bat around there. And I was wearing just a pair of leggings and an old t-shirt for that. And then we dashed home and I dashed out again quite quickly after because my daughter had a soft play party to go to. So I had to get changed quite quickly into this outfit and without thinking too much about it. So I've got on a pair of ready to wear jeans and a handmade top, which is a woven top. And I quite like this top actually because it's a pattern I really love and it's one that when I put it on with a pair of jeans it makes me feel a bit more put together. So it's quite an easy choice to choose it. Um, today I just pulled it off the hang, I got it on and it's quite nice and comfy and relaxed to wear too. So yeah, it's a really nice top I think to pair with a pair of jeans. And you might recognise the top from the cuff um, because that's the sort of feature of this top. The pattern is this one here which is the cuff top pattern by the assembly line. So it's a woven um, top pattern I really like. I've made a few versions of it. And the version I've made today, I made in this really pretty cotton lawn fabric. It's a Lady McElroy cotton lawn fabric that I got from Minerva. And I think they've still got this print in stock. I'll double check and I'll link it below if they do. But I really like the print on this one. I think it's quite a pretty one. It's got a black base and it's got these sort of floral bouquets all over it. With lots of different colours on. I'll send a bit so you can see. Some really pretty almost watercolour colours in there with a bit of green foliage as well. Um, and it's really nice um, quality cotton lawn, really lovely to sew with. I do love a Lady McElroy cotton lawn. I've sewn with a few different ones of their prints. But yeah, the cuff top's really nice pattern. I'll show you the details of it. So it's a woven top pattern with this boat neck. Then it's got this um, centre, front and back um, split. So you cut two pieces of the front and two pieces of the back and then sew a seam down the middle, which I quite like because you can either use it for colour blocking or using up smaller scraps, or you can have fun with the sort of top stitching to make it a bit of a feature. So on the version I've made here, I used orange top stitching just for a feature. I'll stand up a bit so you can see it a bit better. Um, so yeah, that's one feature of the pattern, but the main feature I think is these sort of oversized elasticated cuffs. I think they're just a really nice and um, pretty feature on this top. And then the general fit on the top is quite straight and boxy. It's not designed to be close fitting, you just pull it on over your head. There are no sort of ties or fastenings to this one. In terms of sizing, um, it goes from extra small up to an extra extra large, and the largest size is for a bust of 49 inches. And I always go for the extra small on this one, which is designed for bust 32 inches, waist 25.6 inches, and hips 36.4 inches. And I'm um, 32. 26, 36, and I find it fits me nicely. There's definitely plenty of room in it. It's definitely designed to be fairly straight fitting and boxy rather than yeah, close fitting at all. So it's a really nice comfy one to wear. And when I made this version, I made it slightly cropped and I actually really like that style. I'll put a picture so you can see how it looks with a pair of sort of skinny high-waisted jeans, which I've paired it with today. I quite like it being a little bit cropped. I made another version in a couple of different um, colorways of a Lady McElroy cotton lawn sort of color block version. And I made that one a bit longer. And when I wear this one, I do think I'd actually like to crop that one off a bit more. I think I might adjust it and bring it up a bit higher. I think I reached this version more because I quite like the cropped look of it. Um, and what's I going to say? Oh, yes, I was going to share with you the adjustments I make to the cuff top. The first adjustment I always make to the cuff top is to bring in the boat neckline slightly because it is quite a wide neckline, this one. And when I made my first version, I did a bit of research and I saw quite a lot of people saying that 
that because the top's so wide, it can show your bra straps a little bit. So I've always adjusted my cuff tops to bring the boat neckline in a bit. I think I bring it in by about one and a half centimetres on each side of the neckline. So you can see where it sort of comes to now. And I've actually done a separate video tutorial talking about how I adjust the pattern pieces to bring the neckline in because you need to adjust the actual main pattern pieces and the facing piece too because the top's finished by a facing on the inside. So I'll link that video down below in case it's something you might be interested in doing. So that's one adjustment I always make with this pattern. And the other adjustment I make is just to bring the front neckline down slightly because when I looked at a lot of people wearing this top on Instagram before I made my first version, it looked like it came up quite high. And I don't like a neckline that comes up too high, so I think I brought it down by about a centimetre or a centimetre and a half, and I quite like where it sits now. It doesn't feel like it comes up too high on my neck. And then the other adjustment I made, which is just one of those things that happen by chance, is that for the cuffs, I think the pattern specifies you need five centimetre wide elastic, and I just used four centimetre wide, because that's what I happen to have in stock in my sort of haberdashery at home. And I think it still gives a nice feature to the cuffs. I don't think they're sort of too small with a four centimetre wide elastic. And I actually quite like where they come to on my arm. I think with a five centimetre, it would end up a little bit shorter because you have to turn it up twice with a five centimetre, so it'll bring it up a little bit higher. I do quite like where it comes to. So it's a happy coincidence that that's the elastic I happen to have in stock. So that's why I'm wearing today, the cuff top by the assembly line. It's a really simple sew, it comes together really nicely. There aren't too many pattern pieces um, to cut, and I think it works really well in a stable fabric like cotton lawn, um, which is always a nice fabric to sew with, I think, a cotton lawn. So I'll put the picture up again of me wearing it. It's a nice, comfy, relaxed one to wear. Just put it on and off you go, which is what I did today. So that's what I'm wearing today. So I'll finish off here and go and join my family downstairs and the lively game they're up to. And I'll be back on again for tomorrow, which will be Monday. So yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Monday morning now, and as you can see, I'm downstairs in my usual spot. It's much quieter in the house today as the children are at school, so much easier to film here without worrying about lots of background noise. Um, and I've had a busy morning this morning. I've been doing quite a lot of chores. I, I sorted out the food shop, a few other bits and bobs. So it's quite nice to be sitting down now with you and sharing what I'm wearing today. And the weather is actually really random today. It's really, really warm and sunny which is weird because the last week has felt really autumnal and we've had rain and it's been colder. So today feels like a bit of a blip in a way. It feels like we're back in summer, so I don't know whether it's going to be the last day of summer or not, but I'm enjoying it while the sunny weather's here and I've got on quite a summery dress that I haven't had on for ages actually, so it's nice to get it out. And I really love the print on this one. It always makes me feel quite happy when I'm wearing it. And this dress is one I made using this pattern here, which is the Hinterland dress pattern by So Liberated. I really like so liberated patterns. I've only actually made two, but they're ones that I've made several versions of each of them. One is the hinterland dress and one is the estuary skirt, which is a really nice um, woven skirt pattern with a flat front, a button down front and an elasticated back. It's really comfy to wear and I love that pattern. And I love the hinterland dress pattern too. I'll show you the line drawing so you can see all the details. So yeah, it's a woven dress pattern. It's got bust darts. Um, it's got a button down front that you can either make just on the bodice or all the way down the skirt. And it's got a gathered skirt with pockets um, and you can make it in different lengths on the skirt and it's also got different finishes to the arm. You can either make a sleeveless version which is finished with bias binding or you can make a short sleeve version or a longer sleeve version. So I feel like it's one of these patterns that is kind of a classic gathered um, waist woven skirt pattern that you can make quite look quite different depending on which options you choose. It's quite a flexible pattern I think and it's got a really good size range to it. It goes from a size zero up to a size 34 and I think the size 34 is for a bust of 58 and a half inches from memory and I always size down on this pattern because it's designed to be a little bit oversized and to come up quite loose so I always go for the size zero and that's designed for a bust of 31 inches waist of 25 inches and hips of 33 and a half inches and my measurements would put me at a size two for bust and waist and then a bit larger somewhere between a size four and six for hips but actually I find the size zero fits me quite nicely um there's still enough room to be able to pull on over my head um but yeah and, and obviously with the hips measurement that's not too critical because it's a gathered skirt so there's plenty of room but I just feel like if I size down slightly it fits a bit more neatly on me and I quite like that look of it on me but I know some people prefer a slightly more oversized look of it to go with how the pattern's intended so I guess it's a bit of a personal preference but the version I made today as you can see um is a hack because it hasn't got the button placket at the front it's a really um, easy hack to do 
you basically just get, take the front bodice piece and cut it on the fold rather than cutting two pieces and then just sew it up and it comes together really nicely and so it's got this scoop neck the hinterland dress and so for the for this hack all you need to do is add bias binding around the neck that's kind of continuous bias binding rather than a piece that's sort of finished in the middle by the button placket so it's a really nice simple hack and I think it makes the hinterland dress look a little bit different and I thought it would work quite well in this fabric which is quite bold and busy and I thought a placket might be a bit too much. I wanted to keep it really simple but I still have the nice shape of the hinterland dress. So I've gone for the short sleeve option and then I've gone for the skirt that's just above the knee and I've added on a waist tie which is here. Um, the pattern waist tie included is a bit more of a chunky waist tie but I've kind of made a skinnier version because I thought it would suit this fabric better. And this fabric is a viscose chalet fabric that I bought a couple of years ago from Fabric Godmother. I really love it actually, it's, I guess it's like a leopard print but in different colours with this mustard and then these pops of hot pink. I love the mustard and hot pink combination together. It's a really nice um, lightweight swishy viscose, so perfect for the slightly warmer weather we're having today. And I put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. I think the only other adjustment I make to this pattern is just to lengthen the bodice slightly um because it is quite it does come up quite high on me so I've just brought it down slightly so I think it might have been I lengthened it by an inch or so but yeah it's, it just sews up really nicely I find that the um solo braced instructions are really good and it's a really nice comfy one to wear and I do love this print so that's why I'm wearing today I think I'm going to head off and have some lunch now so I'll see you again tomorrow for Tuesday I don't know what the weather's going to be like whether we're going to be back to autumn or whether summer's going to be carrying on who knows but either way I'll see you tomorrow bye Hello, it's Tuesday morning now and I've just got back from the school run and I'm going to dash out again in a moment. I'm due to meet a couple of friends and we're going to go for a walk and a cup of tea, which will be nice. But I thought I'd pop on first and share with you what I'm wearing. And today is definitely a bit more autumnal out there. It's a bit chillier. There's some grey clouds in the sky. I think it's going to rain later. So fingers crossed the rain holds off for a walk, but I'll definitely be taking my raincoat with me just in case. But I've got on a dress today that I think is really works well for this sort of in-between weather where it's not too cold but not too warm either and I made it using this pattern here which is the Fleetwood pattern Fleetwood dress pattern by French Navy and if you've watched my channel for a while you'll probably know I really like French Navy patterns they haven't got a huge range of patterns but the ones they have I find really wearable I really like the style of them and I think they sew up really nicely too so I've only made one version of this pattern the Fleetwood dress which is the one I'm wearing now but whenever I wear this um, I do think I should make another version but I'll show you the line drawing so you can see all the details on it. I think it's a really nice shirt dress with some interesting details. So there are two different variations and they both have this round neck finished with bias binding and a button down front and then they've got an interesting bodice with this panelling at the side at the front and back and then sort of a yoke at the top too so you can see the sort of um, panelling there along there and there. There's a bit of gathering at the back too, which is quite pretty. And it's got a three quarter length sleeve with a cuff and a placket, which you can see here. Um, and then yeah, I've made this version here, version A, which has a waistline that's sort of finished at your natural waist. Um, and then it's got two tiers of a gathered skirt. And then there's view B also, which it has a sort of slightly more dropped waist and a one tier skirt. And I think that's kind of inspired by a sort of flapper style dress. But yeah, there was this um, version that really... Um, I really like the look of when the pattern was first released. I thought it was quite nice. So it's kind of a classic sort of shirt dress on top with quite clean lines, but then had a pretty sort of ruffle on the bottom. I thought that was quite a nice mix. Um, I would mention the French Navy doesn't have the biggest size range in their patterns at the moment, at least. So the pattern goes from a size A for a bust of 32 inches up to a size H for a bust of 42 and a half inches. And when I made this version, I went for the size A, which is designed for 32 inch bust, 24 inch waist and 34 inch hips. So my waist and hips would put me at a size B, but when I looked at the finished garment measurements, there was quite a lot of ease around the waist and certainly around the hips with the gathered skirt. So I went for the straight size A, which worked, but I did make a couple of adjustments to this pattern. I made a toile of the bodice to sort of check the fit, um, just because this fabric was quite, I like, really love this fabric. and I didn't want to risk cutting into it and ending up with a, um, a dress that didn't fit very well. So before I cut into this fabric, I tried out the bodice with some other fabric just to check the fit and I did end up making a couple of adjustments I ended up making a slight forward shoulder adjustment and um, I think by about a centimetre just to get the seam line to sit nicely on my shoulder so it wasn't pulling back too much and also on this dress I found that the sleeve cuffs came up really tight so I ended up widening them a little bit so there's a little bit of room there now um so yeah that's the other adjustment I made to this one 
It's a really nice dress. I really love the details and I love the fabric um, that I made this one in. It's a fabric I had in my stash for quite a while before I cut into it because I wanted to make sure I made the right choice for it. So it's a chambray and I do love a chambray. I find them really comfy to wear and nice to sew with too. And it's got this Parisian theme print on. So it's got the Eiffel Tower and little pink hearts and little Breton striped top and all sorts of cute sort of, yeah, Paris inspired sort of doodles as it were on this fabric. So yeah, I really love the fabric and I had a bit of fun with choosing buttons. I chose these sort of bright pink buttons, which I've got on the um, these sleeves too, to sort of pick out the little pink hearts on the fabric. So it's a really nice comfy one to wear. I've got the two ruffle tiers and I'll put a picture so you can see what it looks like on. And I found this one sewed up really nicely too. Like I said, I do like French navy patterns in their instructions. And as you can see in the picture, I just popped it on with a pair of um, trainers for the school run. And I'll probably do the same when I head out later. And I might take my pink raincoat too, in case it does rain. So that's what I'm wearing today. So I'll finish off now and get myself ready to head out. So I'll back on tomorrow for Wednesday. So yeah, see you again tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Wednesday now and it's just coming up to midday here. And I've been out of the house all morning. I had a school event with my son um, first and then I popped into town afterwards to run a few errands. But now I'm back home and I'm about to go and make myself some lunch. But I thought I'd pop on here first and share with you what I'm wearing today. And the weather is a little bit cooler today, so I've got on one of my handmade sweatshirts. And I'm actually really excited that sweatshirt weather is here. We had a really lovely hot summer, but it is nice. I do like the seasons and it is nice that it's cooling down now and I can get some different things out of my wardrobe. So I've got ready to wear jeans on and handmade sweatshirt. And this sweatshirt is one I made using one of my favourite sweatshirt sewing patterns, which you might be familiar with um, if you've watched my channel before. It's this one here, the Jarrah sweatshirt by Megan Nielsen Patterns. And I really love the Jarrah sweatshirt. I love the sort of general fit of it and I love it sort of relaxed, easy to wear sort of vibe. And I also love that it comes with lots of different variations built into the pattern. So I've got a few Jarrahs and I've used quite a lot of the different options um, that are built into the pattern when I've made my different versions. I'll show you the different options. There's kind of like a classic relaxed sweatshirt here with drop shoulders and a sort of crew neck and a bottom band and cuff bands too. That's kind of classic sweatshirt option. There's this version here that has these split cuffs. I've never actually made those split cuffs. That's only, I think that's the only option I haven't used in this pattern to date. And it's got this sort of dipped um, curved hem, which is quite nice. And there's this version here, which has this tie at the front, like the model is wearing on the front of the pattern envelope. And the final version here, oh, the light's not reflecting very well, here it is, it has a funnel neck. Um, and I can't remember, I think it's just a plain sort of um, one length um, turn up hem on this one rather than a hem band at the bottom. So yeah, loads of different options built into this pattern. It sews up really nicely. It's got a really good size range too. Megan Nielsen released their patterns in two size ranges, a size zero up to a size 20, and then also a curve range, which goes from a size 14 up to a 30. And the version of the Jarrah sweatshirt that I'm wearing today is the first version I ever made of it. So it's a bit of an oldie, this one, but I still like getting it out. This is the tie version. So um, this version here, I'll stand up so you can see the little tie on the side. Which I think is a really cute feature. And I think that was what drew me to the pattern originally. And then I tried the other options and just fell in love with all the options that are included. But it's got the dropped um, shoulder, the sort of round neck. I've just used the same fabric for the cuffs and the neckband. And the one little tweak I made when I made this version was, um, for, the, for, for the tie at the bottom, um, I added a little facing on the inside, as you can see here, which wasn't part of the pattern pieces, just because I thought um, if I tied it up and you just turned over the edge to hem it, you'd have this white bit at the back that would show when you tied it. So I thought to have the sort of tie being fully the fabric, I had that little facing that goes all the way around um, the sweatshirt. and just means when I tie it up, you don't get any white bits showing this fabric so that was a little tweak uh, but other than that I think I made this just per the pattern exactly and I made the size zero that is designed for bust 32 inches waist 24 inches and hips 34 and I went just based on my bust measurement and didn't worry too much about my waist and hips because it is quite a boxy loose fit to it um, and I guess the tie sort of pulls in about around the waist a little bit on this version so it does give a bit more shaping than the sort of classic sweatshirt version but I quite like how yeah you wouldn't necessarily tell my different versions of the Megan Nilsson Jarrah sweatshirt were all the same sweatshirt pattern. So I feel like I can wear them all out in one week and it will look like I'm wearing totally different sweatshirts each day. Um, but anyway, I'll put up a picture of me wearing this one. On this fabric, I got it from an online fabric shop that has unfortunately since closed down, but it's a really pretty French terry fabric. I really like the sort of blue base and then this sort of pretty coral colour of the flowers on it. And it's a bit of an unusual fabric because it's like a reverse French terry. So actually 
on the outside there's a sort of french terry texture you usually get on the inside of the fabric i'm not sure if it'll pick up on screen um it's got this sort of oh it's hard to show it's got this sort of loop back texture to it on the outside and on the inside which is the white is actually just a sort of classic knit sort of smooth texture so i quite like it. it's a bit different it has a bit of a texture to it this one it's just really nice and comfy to wear um i really love the jarrah sweatshirt pattern and i'm sure i'll be getting out many more of my jarrahs um as the weather gets cooler so that's pretty good so yeah anyway i'm gonna go off and get myself some lunch now so i will see you again for tomorrow which is thursday so yeah see you tomorrow bye hello it's thursday morning now and today i have my son at home with me he's come down with a nasty head cold sort of a classic back to school cold he didn't sleep very well last night and didn't look at all himself this morning. So my husband and I thought we'd keep him off school today, give him a chance to rest up and hopefully he'll be ready to get back to school tomorrow once he's had a good rest. So he's in the other room at the moment. He's currently reading an Enid Blyton book and it's really nice to see him enjoying Enid Blyton stories because I loved them when I was a child too. So while he's having that bit of downtime, I thought I'd sneak in here and share with you what I'm wearing today. And it's another slightly chilly day today. The sun's shining, but it's definitely a bit of an autumnal sort of chill to the air. And I've got on a pair of ready to wear jeans and a handmade top and the top I made using this pattern here which is the Agnes um, jersey top pattern by Tilly and the Buttons and it's one of Tilly and the Buttons older patterns it's probably one you know but I really like it I find it a really nice comfy top to wear perfect for this sort of in-between weather I'll show you the line drawings it's quite a close fitting jersey top with a scoop neck and you can make this sort of basic version or you can make a version with a little ruching at the front here or there's a sleeve a different sleeve piece you can cut that gives you sort of a gathered sort of more voluminous ruched sleeve which I've never actually made that version because I'm not sure big sleeves on me and I often just make this simple version here just for quite a classic jersey top and um, it hasn't got the biggest size range ever I know Tilly and the Buttons are extending their size range on their newer patterns but I don't think they've extended all of the older patterns yet and I don't think they've extended the Agnes so it currently goes from I think a UK 6 up to a UK 20 and I usually make the size UK 8 which is their size 2 which is designed for a bust of 32 inches, a waist of 26 inches and hips of 35 inches and I'm 32, 26, 36 so that matches my um, bust and hips waist measurement. My hips one inch wider but I've not bothered grading out on it because I generally make them in sort of stretchy fabrics so there's a bit of ease there so I find the straight size too fits me nicely. I do usually make an adjustment to lengthen the sleeves slightly. Before I started making my own clothes I had a lot of tops that had slightly too short sleeves on me which always used to be a little bit of a bugbear from ready to wear clothes so I really love that now I make my own clothes all my sleeves are nice and long and cosy and the version I'm wearing today is in this really pretty cotton jersey fabric I got it from an online fabric shop that has unfortunately since closed down but I think this is a craft cotton craft cotton co is that the right name I think um cotton jersey so you might be able to find it elsewhere but it's got this really pretty sort of light blue background with these little white flowers on I quite like the ditzy print and I quite like how it's sort of spread out a little bit I think it's quite pretty and a bit different and I've actually made a dress in this fabric too and also one for my daughter because I liked it so much I bought a decent chunk of it so that's why I'm wearing today and then this morning I was quite excited because it was suitable weather to get out my gilet that I made last year and I haven't had a chance to wear much so I thought I'd show you that one too I took a picture with that one on as well I'll show you the picture first so you can see me with my Agnes top on and my gilet over the top and this gilet I made using a pattern from this magazine here which is five mood issue 16 and the only five mood magazine I've got and I've made two patterns from it and I really love them both and I'll show you the gilet pattern it's called the Irma gilet or the Irma bodysuit and here it is here so it's quite a simple um, pattern for a sort of wrap around gilet with a waist tie and it's got these patch pockets on it and it's designed to be made with sort of bias binding around the edge but I actually made my version to be lined um, because I'd seen um, somebody on Instagram do that um, Alexis who is my sweet sunshine I'll link her account down below she makes some lovely clothes and I saw her make one that was lined and I thought it looked really nice so I thought I'd try it myself so this is my gilet here um, here's the waist tie and here's a gilet you can see this lovely flannelly lining and then the outside is made with a Merchant and Mills cotton jacquard fabric which looks quilted um, but it's actually um, I don't think it's actually quilted it's sort of a layers of um, cotton sort of threads inside it so it makes it really nice and cozy and squishy to wear and it's in this sort of blue colour with this sort of triangle design on it which I think is quite nice sorry diamond design um, so yeah that's my Irma body warm it's got these patch pockets and I lined it with um, a flannel fabric that I got from Minerva I think it was 
an art gallery flannel. If I can find it, I'll link it down below, but it's lovely. It makes it really nice and snuggly, this Gile, and it just goes on really nicely, tight round, and it's really nice and comfy to wear. So I really enjoyed getting that one out and wearing it on top of my Agnes top this morning. I'm hoping the weather will stay cool so I can wear it later on the school run when I go and pick up my daughter. But that is what I'm wearing today. I better head off now and um, I need to, it's getting towards um, midday now. So I'm going to make my son and me a bit of lunch and probably have a bit of a chilled out afternoon with him. So I will see you again for tomorrow, which will be Friday. So yes, yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Friday morning now and my son is back in school today. He was a lot brighter this morning, so that's good. He was quite keen to get back. So I've got the house to myself this morning. Well, my husband is working upstairs, but I haven't seen a great deal of him. He's been quite busy. And I took the opportunity this morning of going out for a run, which was quite nice. The weather's really nice today, actually. It's a bit, it's got a bit of a chill to the air, but it's nice and sunny, so perfect for going out for a run and getting some fresh air. And I hadn't been out for a run, actually, since before the summer holidays, so it was good to get out. I did feel quite hot and was quite red when I got back, but I had a shower and I've cooled down. So I thought I'd pop on and share with you what I'm wearing. And actually the weather's nice today. So I've also got a wash load on the line, which is nice, including a new fabric. Cause I do like to dry my fabrics once I've pre-washed them out on the line if, if I can. But I know when we're getting towards winter, there won't be so many opportunities. So it's nice to have a good day for drying washing today. Um, anyway, I'll share with you what I'm wearing today. And I'm at the moment, I've just got a dress on and bare legs because I still feel a bit hot after my run. But I think this is a dress that works quite well with leggings. So I may well pop a pair of leggings on a bit later once I've cooled down a bit more. But the dress pattern I'm wearing today is one of my favourite woven dress patterns of all time. And it's this pattern here which is the fringe dress pattern by Chalk and Notch. And I think it's just a really nice pattern, both as lovely details to it, it sews up really nicely, it's really comfy to wear. I just really love this one. And I'll show you the line drawings with all the details. You can make it as a dress or a blouse. Um, with the blouse version, you basically just uh, make it with a shorter skirt, so it just comes up as a blouse length rather than a dress length. And there are two different versions. So this is the version that I've always made, which is has a sort of V-neck and a button down bodice. And it's got darts at the front and back, which give quite a nice shape to the bodice. And then the feature I really like is this little sleeve here. You basically sort of make this sleeve cuff and then gather it up with a sleeve tab. And I think it's a really pretty detail. You can see here my little sleeve tab here that gathers it up. I just think it's a bit different. And yeah, I really like that feature. And then it's got a gathered skirt and pockets. And you can add um, waist ties if you want, but I never have on this dress pattern. I quite like how it sits. Um, it's quite a relaxed sort of baby doll fit and I quite like that. And then this is the other version you can make with a more of a standard sort of sleeve cuff and this pretty notched front, but I haven't ever tried that version. But it just sews up really nicely, this one. And it has a good size range too. I think it goes from a size zero up to a size 30. And it also includes two bust sizes, a size B and a size D. And I've always made the B cup um, version and I've made the size zero, which is designed for a bust of 32 inches, a waist of 25 inches and hips of 35 inches. And I've always gone um, with my bust measurement on this one and not worried so much about my waist and hips, um, just because there's a bit of space and a bit of um, looseness around the waist and hips. So I think the bust measurement is probably the most critical. And I think my waist and hips measurements were only one size larger, so I didn't really need to grade out for that. So this is my first version I ever made of the fringe dress, actually, and I still I still really love it. It's in one of my favourite fabrics of all time as well, so I guess it's a winning combination for me. Um, this is a double gauze fabric by Atelier Brunette. I really love the range of these double gauze fabrics. They've got these little metallic spots on, which I think are really cute. This is the black colourway and it's got um, silver spots, but I think some of the colourways have a more of a sort of goldy, bronzy spot on them, depending on the colourway. There's loads of different colourways available. There's like a navy, I think, and a sort of ochre. I've made um, a dress in the red version. Um, there's also a kind of off-white version. I actually made a fringe blouse in that. So yeah, I really like this fabric. I like that it's double gauze because it keeps you a little bit cosy, but it's also lovely and breathable. And I also like this kind of flat double gauze. It's not a crinkly one which I think makes it a bit nicer to sew with, um, less risk of it stretching out and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's a really nice comfy one to wear this one. So I went for pretty much exactly um, version um, A here with no adjustments. I didn't lengthen the bodice on this one because I quite like where it comes up. It's a little bit of an empire line and I quite like that. I'll stand up a bit so you can see. See, I've just gone for plain black buttons because I just wanted to keep it quite simple and just enjoy the sort of pretty fabric and the pretty little details on this one. 
and I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. Oh, and the other thing that this pattern has that's nice is a um, dipped hem, so it kind of dips down at the front and the back, which is another pretty feature to it. See, I really like this one. It's a really nice, comfy one to wear, and it sews up so nicely. The instructions are really, really good on this one, and the finish is really nice, particularly um, this sort of front placket is finished with a facing, but you turn it under and sew it on the inside, so it's all really neat, and the seams are enclosed, which I quite like. Um, yeah, so I just, yeah, it's just a really nice pattern. So that's why I'm wearing today. I better get on now. I've got another wash load on. I'm taking advantage of the nice weather while it's still nice because it looks like it might be getting a bit rainier and a bit more autumnal um, quite soon. So I'm going to get off and do that. So I'll finish this video off here. So thank you very much for watching this week of my handmade wardrobe. Gosh, the sun's really coming through the windows now as I'm finishing off. It's been really fun to pop on every day and share what I'm wearing. And I hope you've enjoyed um, hearing a little bit about what I've been wearing every day. If you've enjoyed the video, as ever, I'd love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, then please do consider subscribing to hear more about um, my sewing, my dressmaking, new fabrics, um, new patterns, pattern hacks, and all that sort of thing. And if you subscribe and also press the bell icon, that means you'll be notified when my future videos come out. So thanks again for watching. I hope you've had a good week too, and I hopefully see you again soon. Bye.